This is the first video I'm filming during lockdown Mark III here in Yorkshire and the UK. Confined once again to our own four walls of our home and I'm currently watching the snow falling quite prettily outside thinking I wish I was out there making photographs of it. But we've got to make do with what we've got at the moment and we must heed the advice and stay home and stay safe until it is safe once again to venture out into the big wide world to make photographs. But that doesn't mean that these videos should stop. In fact, it was lockdown in the first place that prompted me to put a bit of effort into this YouTube channel. So in this video, we are continuing our Thinking Photographically series. To shake it up a bit, going into 2021, I'm wearing my new waxed flat cap that I got for Christmas, and I'm also trying out some new unique and quirky camera angles. Hey up, how are you doing? If you've been following this series carefully, you will have probably gathered that this video was meant to be entitled, What Do Your Photographs Mean? But because I haven't really been able to get out and take many meaningful photographs recently, I'll come back to that at a later date. Instead, we're looking at these things, and we're going to be asking the question, what does your camera mean to you? As photographers, our cameras are pretty important, aren't they? Without them, we just simply wouldn't be able to play our trade and make photographs in the first place. If you look online at YouTube or blog posts, or if you look in magazine articles, then you could be mistaken for thinking that everything in photography is about kit, as we see reviews of all the different camera types that are currently on the market speculation about new kit that's coming out. How many megapixels do you have? How many focus points? How well does your camera use those focal points? What's the widest aperture your lens can get to? And as we start taking on all this information, we start to feel this inferiority complex where we think that this little piece of kit that we're using isn't good enough so we have to buy into all this new kit to make our photographs better than ever before. But is it all about kit or is that just a way that the camera manufacturers try to get into our heads and tempt us into purchasing things that we don't necessarily need? It isn't just camera manufacturers getting into our heads. It's everything that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis when we try to improve our photography skills. Because every single aspect of trying to improve your photography skills eventually comes down to us thinking, well, our camera kit isn't good enough, therefore I need to upgrade to the next best thing. Because we all tend to buy into this idea that equipment makes our photographs better, it isn't just from the camera manufacturers and the people that are sponsored by them on YouTube to try and get us to buy their wonderful kit in order to make our photographs better. It also comes from the people that we talk to. If you talk to other photographers, you'll hear things like, I'm a Fuji man, or she's a Nikon girl, or they're Canon people. And as well as it becoming this feeling that we have to improve our photography by buying into new kit, it also becomes part of our identity as a photographer almost, that the, the equipment that we use defines the photographs that we make. And for me, that's quite a scary concept. I did a talk for a photographic society a few years ago and as I walked in to introduce myself to the president, 
They were talking to somebody who had just turned up to that photographic society for the first time. And they had this camera in their hand, it was a Nikon camera. And they were saying to this president, can you help me to use this piece of equipment? And all I heard them say was, sorry, I use Canon. And then they turned round and started talking to somebody else. How rude is that? I was absolutely appalled and afterwards I went up to this person and said come along on one of my photo walks, I'll be able to help you out. But going back to this idea of equipment ruling our photography lives, it does tend to take over and if we place too much emphasis on it, it makes us into these people that actually we don't care about what else is going on out there. As long as I've got the most important kit, then I'm doing all right. I can make good photographs. It doesn't matter about everybody else. And that's where it starts to get very dangerous. When we place so much emphasis on the equipment that we're using, we tend to forget two of the main aspects of photography. Firstly, the subject that we're photographing, and secondly, how we are interpreting that subject as an individual photographer. Both of those things have very little to do, if anything, to do with the equipment that we're using. We've got to remember that our camera is just a tool. A few years ago, I was down at Photo London listening to an excellent talk by the abstract photographer Adam Foss. At the end of the talk, he opened the floor to questions and answers. And as he put his final photograph on a screen behind him, somebody asked, what settings did you use to make that photograph? And his answer was, if you're asking me that question, you're not looking at the photograph properly. And I remember thinking at the time, that's a bit of an abrupt answer. That person's probably just starting out in photography, trying to work out the camera settings and how to work the camera, which is a very valid thing to do. We all have to do that. But as I went away and started thinking a bit more about what he'd said, it started to sink in and make sense. Let me put it this way. Imagine you've just seen the first ever performance of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And at the end of the performance, Shakespeare himself walks onto the stage and says, right, I'm going to answer any questions that you have. And somebody puts their hand up and says, lovely play Shakespeare, but what quill did you use to write the play? It seems an absolutely stupid question, because when we go and see a play, it's the, the storyline that the play exudes, it's the way that we feel when we are watching that play, the sense of being part of the story. It's not the tool of the trade that we're looking at, it's the final performance. And as I said in that last video where Ansel Adams likened the process of making a photograph to a composer writing a score, and then the photograph itself being the performance. If that photograph is to be a performance, then the things that have gone before it, the tool that we have used, is no longer at the forefront of either our or the people that are looking at its minds. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to own an all-singing, all-dancing camera. Just like if you're a mechanic, it would be nice to own an all-singing, all-dancing toolbox with every single tool that you could ever wish to need under the sun stored within it. Even if you could do your job with just a few screwdrivers and a couple of spanners. The difference is that we have to know that our camera is a tool, and then once we've used it, we have to remember that the photograph is a final product. You're not going to look back at your car after its service and think the mechanic didn't use that specific tool on it, or they didn't use the state-of-the-art wrench that does a specific job. All you're bothered about is that your car's been fixed. A photograph is a photograph, and a camera is a tool that we use to get to that point. As the great photographer Richard Avedon once said, it's not the photographer that makes a good photograph, it's the eye and the mind of the photographer. 
which I think is a really good way of thinking about it. Personally, I think cameras are brilliant things, and if you can afford a brilliant one, then by all means go out and buy it, along with all the kit and caboodle that comes with it, because chances are you will take better quality photos. But if you can't afford it, or you don't see the point in doing it, then stick with what you've got and learn the tool of the trade. Get the most out of that equipment that you possibly can and put as much effort as you can into thinking about what you're photographing and coming up with amazing subject matter. Because at the end of the day, that's the thing that people are going to look for in your photographs. Somebody who's walking through a gallery or looking at your gallery on your website or looking at social media isn't going to think, well, oh, that photograph was taken with this camera, therefore it's better than if it was taken with another one. As such, I don't really have any fresh photographs to share with you like I would do usually at the end of one of these Thinking Photographically videos. So I thought instead I would share some of the photographs that I've taken through the years simply on my mobile phone, not my Nikon Z6 that I've got in my hand here. In doing so, I hope it makes you realise that the subject and what is going on in the photograph and the photographer's intent is as important, if not more so, than the piece of equipment that is used to make it. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, then please share them with me in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already for more videos like this, and click on that bell icon to be reminded every time we post a new video here on the Yorkshire Photo Walks channel. Don't forget as well to check out our website, yorkshirephotowalks.com. With it being locked down, we're not going out and about taking photographs and doing tuition sessions at the moment, but we are doing a few online sessions over the next few months. And of course, it doesn't matter whether you're in Yorkshire, the rest of the UK, or wherever you are in the world, you can still take part in them. So check that out at yorkshirephotowalks.com. And you can also follow us on social media at Photo Walks Yorks on Facebook and Instagram for all of our latest news and photo walk photographs. I'd say I was going to set off home now usually, but I am home already. The luxury it is is lockdown. So I'll leave you with those photographs taken on my phone. Until the next time, remember your camera is a tool. It is this, your mind, that is the thing that makes your photographs good. See you next time.